Hello and welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. Today we are testing the BMW X330e and specifically one feature. This is a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Now for the best optimal use of the available energy on board, you should prioritize your electric driving for in the city and your combustion driving for on the highway. Electric motors get the most efficiency in the city and combustion engines get the most efficiency on the highway. So the BMW has a feature, a mode, where if you put in the destination as to where you're going, it will prioritize when to use combustion and when to use electric. And so we're going to be testing that on a round trip from here in Fort Collins down to Denver, Colorado and back. It's about 150 miles round trip. We're going to put the first destination in as a waypoint and then we'll have it navigate back here to home. Again, we have an X330E 2020 brand new fully topped up on the plug-in system. So the battery's fully charged. Will we use combustion or will it just burn the juice out of the way? It should prioritize when to use both. I'm excited to see what happens. I've always wanted to try this with a plug-in hybrid. I know Volvos do it, I know some others do, and we're testing it here in this X3. Let's jump in and go down to Denver. <laughs> Well, we are charged up to like 95% nearest makes no difference. Only a 16 amp onboard charger. I guess that's okay for a small battery like this. Would have liked to see it. So what I've done here is because we're going on a round trip solution, I've selected the Apple store first. I need to get a new phone. You can see this is totally just cracked on both sides, destroyed. Uh, and this was the only store to have it in stock in South Denver. And then we're gonna come back to here. So we'll see if the system only optimizes for the trip on the way there, uh, or if it will do the round trip. I'm pretty excited to see. Now we'll hit start and we'll let it do its thing. We wanna go into auto e-drive, uh, intelligent anticipation when guidance is active. And that's what we need. So we have the correct settings, we're into reverse. Um, if you want to know more about the X3, we have plenty of other videos on this particular car. However, I'll give you the quick rundown on the way out to the highway. This car is 65 grand, which is a lot of money for an X3. And that's a lot of money for an X3 that doesn't carry an M badge. But that car is even more expensive. So yeah, a lot of money. You do get a federal tax credit. I think it's around five grand for this. Outside temperature 37. BMWs have been doing this for years. And uh, we're just gonna drive totally normally. Right now we're in full electric mode. We'll update you throughout the drive um, as to what the car does. I'm so interested to see this uh, automatic uh, planning route. I guess right now we're in a city environment. I hate the turn signal on this car. I see why BMW owners do not use their turn signals because listen to that. So loud. Now the combustion engine has kicked on. Pretty interesting to watch this all work. 288 horsepower in this particular configuration. Uh, it is, mirrors makes no difference, the same price as the regular X3 when you factor in the tax credit. So I don't see why you wouldn't get the plug-in hybrid unless there's like lease deals, which I'm sure there are. Uh, the plug-in hybrid is the one on paper to buy at least. Uh, way more efficient, can drive around electric, another 80 horsepower, 70 horsepower over the basic one, and it's just kind of cool. So now the engine's doing its cold start cycle. We'll be using the Active Driving Assistant Pro Plus. I can't remember the exact name, but anyway, it does active steering, adaptive cruise control, and all the good stuff. The heads-up display is absolutely massive and gorgeous. Uh, so really think we're in for a nice cruise here in the X3 and we're back to electric mode. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens with the navigation planned out. Should get there at 6.58. We need to be there at 6.45, so we might have to put our foot down a little bit on the drive. We've driven about five miles over to the highway entrance here, uh, and this is where we're gonna see if it really does something. So it's prioritized electric driving in the city. However, at this point, I'm still not sure if it's done anything because it prioritizes electric driving whenever it's just in normal mode with a full battery. So we're down to about 75, 70% 70 state of charge on the high voltage battery. Uh, we really haven't kicked on the uh, combustion engine more than one time because I needed a hard acceleration just to get around someone. Uh, and now we're gonna be merging up onto the highway. Now, a weird thing about the electric system on this car is it actually shifts gears. Uh, it's on the front side of the transmission, so you can feel it torque, then a, a torque, you know, little split in the torque curve, and then it shifts and then it piles back on. It's really interesting actually. So we're just merging up onto the highway. We're in electric mode still. Here is where I would think it would wanna to switch to combustion because we're getting on the highway. So 
let's find out if it does so. We're still in electric mode, merging just fine. I'm gonna put my foot down just a little bit more, still in electric mode. Uh, of course, I could go pretty deep into the throttle and switch to uh, electric mode, but it's done that for us. So it's working, that's pretty neat. So now it knows on the highway, prioritize combustion driving as I expected and was hoping, but really you never know. Sometimes these systems say they do things and they just don't. And so now we're going to, I guess, turn on cruise, hit set speed, turn on active steering, put the distance to the closest and set it up to 75. I think the speed limit is 75. And now the car is driving itself on combustion. Now we'll see, we'll check in with you when it switches back to electric, uh, because right now uh, we're not totally sure when it will. My guess is as soon as we take the highway off ramp, it'll go back to electric for city driving. Now will it save enough electricity to get uh, back onto the highway and then back home to Fort Collins? I don't have the answer to that, but we will find out anyway extremely quiet, extremely comfortable. You wouldn't even know the combustion engine's on. Right, Timon? Correct. And unless you just were looking at the gauge here, which has gone gray instead of blue. So, so far the system works, and maybe it'll even charge itself up on the way. We'll have to see. Pretty interesting. We are just merging on the Denver Ring Road. We are going around Denver to avoid some traffic. And uh, so far the car's just been in combustion mode the entire time. Had a little bit of slowdown in traffic, just stayed on uh, on combustion engine on the, on the uh, two liter four cylinder turbo. I think it's a B46 motor. I believe it's a, a specially optimized version of their two liter four cylinder for hybrid applications, but it's a super low emissions uh, vehicle engine, a Sulev, if you will. And uh, so far so good, just cruising along. Man, the engine's quiet, car's pretty comfortable. I hate this steering wheel. I mentioned it earlier, it's way too thick. Um, I, it needs a thinner steering wheel, but other than that, the car is a, uh, pretty good. And look, I'll put my foot down. It moves. This thing rockets pretty good. And you don't even hear the engine. We'll just slow down there. So that's interesting. When you go past 100% in this mode and put your foot past the kickdown switch, it goes into e-boost. So it was actually using the combustion engine and the electric motor for boost during that wide open throttle acceleration run. Um, but, but we are not gonna do that, we're just driving normally now. We've just been cruising at 75, 80, right with, with traffic and inside the speed limits. So all is good and loving the ride here in the BM. It's nice to be back in a BMW. I've been driving these things for years and this is cool to be in the latest generation of them. The active driving assistant with the active steering, man, is it good. It just does everything. And you can even run steering separate from adaptive cruise control. So if you just want to modulate your speed manually, you can drive with just the steering on and not the cruise control. They're not linked. That's a nice feature. More cars need that. Thanks, BMW. We have just exited off the highway, and I think we're actually getting onto another highway. Still running on combustion. We've been driving for about 90 miles so far. Um, man, what a cruiser this thing is. Oh, it just switched over to electric. So now we are running in EV mode. So as soon as we took the exit, um, we have 1.4 miles up until our next one. We are running in electric, so it just switched. I know this because up to the 40% gauge, 40% of total power, I guess, is uh, uh, allowed to be electric, and the rest is kind of blocked off. There's a little resistance in the pedal, or I should say a dead spot. There's no resistance, per se, uh, that doesn't use uh, combustion uh, engine. And then, um, then it switches when you put your foot down into uh, combustion. But now the electric is switched off. So it went electric for the off-ramp, and now we exit in 0.8 miles. Uh, but yeah, it's running, still running combustion. Wow, that's a pretty cool system. It's just kind of figuring out what's best. Now we're at half, 50% state of charge. We actually used some high voltage battery, uh, some energy while driving, just cruising with the uh, gas engine on. That seems a little bit odd to me. I guess it probably was filling in gaps between gear changes, perhaps. Uh, boosts for wide open, of course, although we only did one of those, you saw that. Um, not really sure, so I guess what I'm looking forward to seeing here is as soon as we exit here on Dry Creek Road, here in uh, Denver, we should see it switch back to electric. We're 
regenning, and yes, that's exactly what's happened. The E-Drive bar has come back. What a neat system. Now, it kind of makes me think that it's thinking about our return trip to uh, Fort Collins by leaving about 50% state of charge. Again, it's only 1.5 miles to our destination here at the uh, Park Meadows Mall to, Mall to get my new phone. All right, we just grabbed some items at the Apple Store. Car on, we're at 50% state of charge. Um, resume guidance, yes, resume. And now it's calculating. Hopefully it sends us up I-25 instead of on the ring road now. And now it says max E-Drive. What we wanna do is we wanna go E-Drive auto. There we go. Wow. Now it says intelligent anticipation. And yeah, it says uh, one hour, 17 minutes to go up I-25. So we're not listening to the BMW nav system here. Another thing we've noticed about this car, should put that on so you can see me, is the passenger mirror does not auto dim, but the driver's mirror does. That just seems like a silly cost-cutting approach. Um, little things like that just really bug me. Oh, man. Anyway, off on the highway we go, and let's see uh, what happens. We'll report when we get to the highway entrance. We are about to merge onto I-25, which is not the way the BMW wants to go. Again, we're ignoring its uh, nav commands. So, will it confuse this whole thing? Because up to this point, we've listened to it as to where it thinks we're gonna go. Now we're about to confuse it. Although it just kicked on the combustion engine here, uh, which is interesting. So we're at uh, about 45% state of charge or so on the high voltage battery. Again, the battery, I, I honestly haven't looked up the size of it. I can't imagine it's more than 10 kilowatt hours. It doesn't seem to be very, uh, very big. And so now it sees we're getting on I-25. It keeps wanting to route us around and around. I think it's just gonna let us run combustion whenever we're on the highway. Let us run on dinosaur juice. So uh, we'll just operate under that pretense. The next you should hear from us is whenever we kick back into electric mode, uh, exiting the highway all the way up in Fort Collins and 90 miles or so, whatever it is, 60 miles, 70 miles. I'm just naming mileage. I don't know how far it actually is. We are pulling off the highway and you can see here the car has just switched back to E-Drive mode as expected. Now it's 6.2 miles to the house. The car is predicting only three miles of electric range, but that electric range calculation is based off of our previous driving history, was which was just uh, you know shredding up the highway. It doesn't know we're gonna be in kind of stop and go at 40 mile an hour. Now it should know that because it we've programmed in the nav that will be on city streets. Um, we'll see how accurate that is though. We have 6.2 miles. Um, my guess is we'll go more than three miles remaining on the battery pack. So let's, um, let's see. But so far this system is blowing me away with how seamless it is, how accurate it is as to when to kick on the combustion engine and to switch it on and off. Um, Man, it's, it's super accurate. As soon as you come off the highway and hit the off-ramp, boom, electric mode. As soon as you get on the on-ramp to merge on the highway, boom, combustion. Uh, it's just so well optimized that uh, this is really uh, quite good technology. I, I really do, do think this is pretty great. Anyway, the BMW's navigation system, just like our i3 is routing us and doing this now, I'm talking with my hands, it's turning the volume up because it's all gesture control. Um, the, the BMW's navigation is routing us some really wonky ways. I don't know why, uh, but, but BMWs traditionally have pretty wonky navs. So uh, nice thing is in this car, wireless CarPlay. The only downside with CarPlay is if you're not using the built-in navigation, this uh, on-route planning for your uh, efficiency does not work. Now, if I was driving normally, I'd probably just do all this manually because I like to have full control over what the car is doing. I like to have all the different settings going, knowing exactly what's going on. Uh, however, most normal people just will put it in the nav. They'll say, hey, BMW, go somewhere. And then uh, every time you mention BMW, of course, this screen comes up. Um, and that's kind of annoying. So now, heading home. Let's see what it does. And with 1.6, we're now down to 1.5 miles to our destination. The uh, electricity has run out and we are back to combustion. So I would say overall the car did an amazing job. However, I still see a little blue on the gauge. It probably doesn't run the battery all the way out just in case you don't plug it back in. Of course, with lithium batteries, they don't like to be full all the time and they don't like to be empty all the time. But can I put it in max E-Drive still? Yes, I can. 
No, I can't. Uh, it took me out. So the Volvo cars, for example, have a pure mode that let you do a deeper discharge of the plug-in battery, but then you must plug it in afterwards because then it sits at really low state of charge and it's not good for it. So um, with the BMW, I guess I'm just gonna try one last time to go max E-Drive, auto, max E-Drive. Nope, doesn't let you do it. So yeah, I'd say uh, this car optimized our 100 and what was it 150 mile round trip maybe even maybe even a little bit more absolutely perfectly what do you think Tynan? yeah i mean it's been what i could have done in my head honestly i would have just forgotten would have forgotten yeah sure it's one of those things you just set the nav and the car kind of just does the right thing and now we've proven it does the right thing that is a surprising result because from a company that is uh as not so strong with electrification as bmw they kind of have gone this plug-in hybrid route, which I don't necessarily agree with. That's a topic for another day. I don't feel that they're putting a lot of effort into electrification, but they then designed this bit of software to optimize the electrification. Now, in certain cities, zones within Germany, for example, I think Frankfurt is one. I saw some signs that are like green vehicle zone in some like 9,000 character German letter. I was there not too long ago. And uh, these are zones that are programmed into the car. So when you enter the zone, it will prioritize electric vehicle driving for inner city emissions. Uh, and I think that's such a smart idea. Look, if you have battery packs, use them in the place where they're going to be most useful which is in inner city driving so big fan of this system if you're going to have a plug-in hybrid and go with this compromise solution then um man these people need to take these christmas lights down it is like way past christmas that is annoying um devalues our neighborhood anyway uh definitely uh go for a a system like this that you can find in the volvo products and the bmw products i'm sure others list them if you know i think like volts do this uh, from like six years ago. It's not new technology. It's just nice to see it implemented and implemented so well here in this application. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this journey to Denver and back here to Fort Collins, back home. Hope you enjoyed the little drive in the X3. I certainly did. Uh, what a comfortable cruiser this thing is and a great road trip car for sure. Although I'm not convinced that the seats are all that comfortable. Anyway, uh, stay tuned. We'll have plenty more coming on many cars, of course. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.